Every adventure is better with a friend. <laughs> hey guys, mentally unstable jungler here. Uh, today I'm going to teach you how to use Create a Suite. Now, the League Director recently came out, but personally I'm not a fan of it. I think it's very overwhelming at like first glance. So I think if you do want to get into like cinematic stuff, Create a Suite is a lot, lot better. So yeah, I'm going to teach you guys how to use it today. So first of all, we'll just jump into uh, any old replay. I mean, hey. Don't pay minds the match history. I've just been playing normal games. So let's go to this leasing game So when we get creative suite up and loading it'll just go through some diagnostics. It'll basically just like Essentially boot up so you can see base parts not found because we haven't loaded into the game yet So we'll give that a second All right, so now that we're in the game I'm gonna pause it real quick and bring up creative suite and you can see how everything's coming up again got a client hook everything Client hooks one of the main things that we need. That's basically what we want. It doesn't matter the game objects haven't loaded. It might not do it for your creator suite, but it does it for mine. But it doesn't really affect my editing process. So we're gonna do this like step by step, like through each section. So first thing you're probably wondering, okay, I'm in the replay, how do I move my camera around? First of all, go to camera data, default, and FPS. And you can see if you use your numpad keys like your numpad arrows like you can change these bindings but these are just what i have and i'm pretty sure it's the default so we can move around the rift as we please and then secondly this is one of the most important steps this is basically just your bread and butter to set everything up so you can actually like use some of the sky boxes the depth of field you need to inject your dll your dll like i say the bread and butter like look if i tried to set a sky box it won't work because we haven't injected so inject the dll uh everything works after this and you can see skybox will appear and i'll leave a link in the description to all these skyboxes that you can download there's two separate files and i think they've got like five different skyboxes in them roughly and uh yeah personally i prefer night for a lot of my edits i recently used full moon so you know you can just change your uh, Change skybox around as you please. So now that we're in game, we've got a skybox. You want to probably learn how to do camera angles and you know your cinematic shots. So let's just pause it again. We'll go to a random point in this game. Uh, can I hover myself? Click on my icon real quick. Let's go to this twitch kill, for example. So now that time's sped up. What we'll quickly do, because we're going pretty slow with the camera, if you go back to the camera data, you can change your FPS camera speed. So we're going at 500 now. Let's change it to 2000, just so we can get all the way over there. Super fast, super easy. And then uh, I can change it back to 500 because the camera's a lot easier to control when you're doing like cinematic shots. So, you know, this is a random game that I had where Twitch was not really tracking my pathing. Not really relevant. So you want to do camera angles. I've got to teach you guys keyframes and hotkeys. So I'll do the hotkeys first. These are the settings that I have. You don't have to copy these. You can do your own bindings, whatever. I have add keyframe on my F9. And then activate keyframe, which plays like the camera preview of the shot you've taken with F11. So F9, F11, that's what I've got set. Not an inside joke. It was an inside job. Um, restart defaults, don't need, camera controls. Now if you go down, you can rotate your camera with Q and E. These are what I have them set as, nothing else I've really messed with. You can toy with these, but if you want to get more complex with the program, then, you know, feel free to like mess around, but we're just teaching the basics. So Q, E, it's just a pitch roll, I can do that as I please. So now that we've got our key binding set to F9 and F11, say we want to start a shot like this, F9, go down a bit, move the camera, rotate it a bit, and then F9 again. Now if we press F11, you'll see that will play out. So pretty much if we just speed this up real quick, this is how I get shots. Now this isn't a good shot obviously, but 
Now you're wondering, take off the UI. You're going to disable the mouse outlines, disable the HUD. So now we've got just the game, just the characters. And, you know, you get your shots, just like that. Pretty simple system. You know, you set up your keyframes on the shot you want. And uh, yeah. So we'll also fix up the rift as well. The rift, when you look at it like this, is pretty ugly. Like if we take off the fog of war real quick, put back on the UI, take off the fog of war, look how exposed the rift is. It is super ugly. So we can fix up a lot of this. It won't fix up all of it, but I'd say like a good 65%. So we want to go back into client hook and like say, pass guy box, we don't really need. You can change that. Go to misc options. I want to do particle fix, backwards calling. You see how much it just fixed there? Backwards calling, and then tree outline. Now you might not be able to see this in game, or on the video, rather. So let me get closer up real quick to show you guys how this outline actually works. You see, like look at this one, for example. Just cleans it up a lot more. So, you know, you want your rift to look as nice as possible. And obviously if you want, if you've got like a better PC, then turn up the graphics as high as possible just to so get like the crispest or the crispiest uh, experience that you want for your videos. So depth of field we can toy with real quick. So like I say, we've got this camera angle still set up. By the way, if you do want to remove this, go to keyframes. And then, well, we won't remove it straight away. We'll do keyframe length. If you go to keyframe length, open it up, and then change the seconds, it will play out longer, pretty much. So I could change this to one second if I wanted a faster shot. You know, you can just toy around, depending on how long or short you need this in mind. Also, if you want to do it the other way around, click on the bottom one and use these arrows, and then it will play the other way. But also, keep in mind that you do have to change the keyframe length again, because the bottom one doesn't lead to another keyframe. So you basically just have to you know, do that. So that's pretty simple. We can clear the keyframes and when we press F11, nothing's really working anymore. You know, we remove them. Now we'll do a quick shot with my lease in real quick. Like say that this part is exposed. You generally don't want to get a shot here. It's pretty ugly and open. Like you can see everything's like super detached, but that is not the point. So let's just, I don't know, say I think we're playing at like 0.25 speed right now, so we'll do F9 and then go down a bit. Still look here. Press Q and F9. That's an okay shot. So what we're gonna do now is uh do the depth of field. I, I may have done this in the wrong order because I know depth of field doesn't sometimes work. So create depth of field and then enable full screen. And you can see the focal distance, like if we look around. You see how there's in focus, but everywhere is out of focus. Like you can see these trees are in focus, that's out of focus. Do the focal length and just do it to like roughly like 400. And then if we move closer, leasens down focus. It just, it cleans up your background for your edits and you know, makes what's in the foreground a more primary target. And that's what you're focusing on really. And I mean, it's kind of the focus. But the thing is, this is a bit of a bug if you Put your keyframes before you do your depth of field. You see how I pressed F11 and the focus is still in the background. Like we've got a 400 focal distance, so leashing should be in focus, but because we've set our keyframes, the bug kind of resets it back to 2000. So, what you have to do, if you do want to get a shot, make sure you set your depth of field and then place your keyframes. So, you have to actually go back into depth of field real quick. Uh, if you put the same number, it generally doesn't work. Again, so you know, just say 500. 500 is good. And then, you know, we can get our camera shot again. Move back. So see, that's generally how I would get a shot. So pull it at a certain moment, and then F11, play, and you know, Leeson's looking all cinematic with his little jog and whatnot. So yeah. Pretty simple stuff. Uh, everything else in here you don't really need. Like, there's a bunch of stuff like recorder I don't use, not don't use, don't use, don't use, I don't use, I don't use. Basically everything. I have to move this up a bit. 
I use the status obviously to like disable HUD, mouse outlines, and announcer if you really need to. The keyframes, the hotkeys, which is a one-time thing. Once you like, if you want to copy my key bindings, then go for it. If not, then that's also fine. Camera data, FPS, default. You know, you can also change your camera speeds. Everything else down here, I don't generally mess with. So, you know, like I say, I'm teaching the basics and. Even with the basic tools that I use, I still get pretty clean shots. Uh, client hook, you know, if you've got a DLL, that's a one-time thing. Your skybox, change it as you please, you know. And also, one thing you can do is rotate it. Like, if I look at the full moon, where is it? There's the full moon. Bring this down a bit. If you just wrote, like, I've personally never used this. I've never felt the need to. But if you do, if you really, really want your, like, moon or sun or whatever's on the skybox in a certain position then you can just rotate it and you can also like offset it so it goes up it goes down like you know simple stuff depth of field also let, let's teach you fog real quick i don't use this tool often but i think it's nice to at least let you guys be aware of it so let's just remove the depth of field real quick turn it off now if you click on fog it, it looks like a skybox, but you can see it kind of fades out here. You can literally set any color. You can generally set white fog. I mean, hey, if you're feeling a bit cap bright, purple and pink fog. I don't know why you'd use these for an edit, but, you know, we'll, we'll generally just go with, like, a not too gray fog. Super dark, super grim and gloomy. Uh, you can use exponential. You can use exponential squared, but generally just leave it on linear. And then your near distance, you want to do like 200, you know, so super foggy. Or if you want to, you can do vertical fog. Now, you're probably wondering, what's this changed? If you go on white, you'll see a lot of ground fog. So it can be a really cool effect if you want to like a super misty and mysterious like setting for the rift like look, look at this whole area looks really really like gloomy pitched out just yeah i mean if you if you really want to go for that setting you can basically create the scenario that you want you can create the vibe so yeah that's pretty much the basics of creator suite those are the tools that i use or have used in the past and anything beyond that is pretty much like unnecessary advanced stuff if you really want to get like expert with it then Obviously it'll take time, feel free to just toy with it, it's a really great tool. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later.